Next on Conversations, Tony Award-winning actor and Northwest native, Roger Robinson. I wanted to be the best actor that I could be. I, never, I didn't want to be a star necessarily. How a surprise encounter made him choose an acting career. As fate would have it, I was going to be a musician. But from that moment, I knew she had pegged what I really wanted, my heart's desire. To working with renowned Seattle resident and playwright, August Wilson. He said that he had all of these people in his head and that he was always dealing with that and the man was very creative. You know, he wrote 10 plays. Roger Robinson, next on Conversations. Local production and broadcast of Conversations at KCTS 9 is made possible in part by KCTS 9 members and by a major grant from the Floyd and Dolores Jones Foundation and by viewers like you. Thank you. Roger Robinson, welcome to Conversations, and thank you very much for taking the time to be here. Well, this has been one heck of a year for you. Um, you win the Tony in June, uh, Best Performance by a Featured Actor for portraying uh, Bynum Walker, August Wilson's play, Joe Turner's Come and Gone. And I, I found a quote, it's taken 46 years to come up these steps to this microphone as you accepted that Tony that night. Take me to that moment. Uh, well, that was an incredible moment. Uh, my sister, who's here today with me, was, I brought her to New York for the first time to go to the Tonys with me. I needed an escort. And uh, uh, that moment was incredible. Jane Fonda was the introducing that category and announcing the winner of that category. And we had met, I met Jane Fonda. I'd actually met her some years back, but we had had uh, lunch together about uh, two weeks prior at the nominees luncheon and Jane told me that she was coming to see the show. I said, when are you coming to see the play? She said her, she was running on Broadway at the same time and she said, I'll be there on June 4th. There's, I'm leading, there's a point to my story. Right. And uh, so June 4th came and she didn't come backstage. So I, the first time I saw her was when she presented me with the Tony. And I got up on the, the platform to accept the Tony. And the first thing I said to her is, you didn't come and see the play. This is all in front of the audience. I don't think they caught it on television, but I said, you didn't come see the play. She said, yes, I did. I was there. I said, you, how come you didn't come backstage? She said, well, because I had a lot of people with me. Go on and accept your award. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> so it was, uh, that, was the, that was the moment. And then I remembered, you know, we, they give you a minute. From the time they call your name, you have a minute and a half. That's the whole walk. And then they, you know, the music starts. So um, I took part of that to, to uh, converse with Jane Fonda. Well, that, that'll be a memorable moment you'll always have, yeah. not only winning, but having that little conversation with Jane Fonda. You know, it's an individual award, but I've heard that you, you would love to see the Tonys honor ensembles, and especially in, oh, yeah. in a play like Joe Turner. Yeah. Which I really think... is a huge cast, and it, it, it's really what makes that thing work. Yeah, there were 11, was, I mean, 11 of us, I believe, I think. Uh, but the Olivier's that they give out in England which are the equivalent to the Tonys for the English people, they have now started an, an ensemble award. And I think the Tonys, I'm advocating the Tonys do the same thing. The last time I was nominated for a Tony was in 1996 for an August Wilson play. And the categories then, they had five people, to uh, four people to each category. There were only four nominees. And Kevin Spacey did the Iceman Cometh on Broadway and he was the one that, ch uh, that went to the committee and said, look, we need to expand this so we have more uh, slots available for actors. And from that point on, the next year, they nominated five in each category. However, the plays and the directors are still four. There are only four nomin uh, nominations in those categories. But for the acting categories, they expanded it to five, much like the uh, Tonys. I mean the Tonys, the uh, Emmys and the Oscars.
working with Bartlett Shear and having that connection, how has that been? Well, it was wonderful. Bartlett is a wonderful director. Uh, there was some controversy, as you've heard. Right. Which I was actually going to ask you about. Yeah, which you were leading up to. <laughs> <laughs> I could smell it. Well, let's get that controversy out there. It was the fact that August Wilson uh, had said in his 10 cycle of plays that he, he would prefer that African Americans, you know, not the, the cast, but also that the directors be African American. Uh, Bartlett Scheer is not, but yet, you know, took this role. Uh, what would you think of all that controversy? I'm of two minds, first of all. Bartlett is one of those exceptions. Um, he is very respectful. And we, I, myself, when I met with him at Lincoln Center to discuss doing the role, I told them I would not do anything unless they were going to celebrate August Wilson and black people. And he, we talked, Andre Bishop, who's the artistic director of the Lincoln Center Theater Company, we talked. And they assured me that this was going to happen. They were also, we, in the process of, of talking with both of them, I understood that Bartlett was into a collaborative uh, relationship, looking for a collaborative relationship. He wasn't there to dictate. And he didn't have, um, he was entirely uh, open to ideas that I had because I really have had more experience in with working with August and I knew August. Uh, and, um, but I also trust the fact that he was a, that he was a really, he's a really creative mind. Uh, the, the rehearsal pro uh, process with Bartlett was a joy and you, and that's really uh, re unusual to come across. I think there's only one other American director and, and believe me, I've been doing this a long time. I've mm -hmm. worked with some of the top. The, uh, Israel Hicks is the only other one that comes to mind that is equal to him working now in the American theater. Let's talk about August Wilson, um, because again, he's part of that Seattle connection. And the fact is, is that, uh, uh, you know, the 10 cycles that he, uh, 10 plays that he created, you, you've appeared in six of them. I have? Right. Has there been that many? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And in fact, as you mentioned, that, that first Tony nomination you received was for, uh, Seven, Seven guitars. guitars, yeah. Right. I, I, I did Jitney in London. Um, uh, I didn't do it in America, but, uh, except at Seattle Rep right out here. Uh, and uh, San Francisco, that same company, it was the original company. I replaced an actor um, that did it. You know, the play started really in 97, playing regional theaters, and they evolved and they finally ended up in New York, not on Broadway because August had King Hedley II opening on Broadway and nobody wanted, but Jitney was the more popular play, it was a more accessible play and it was enormously popular and so they, was in, they were invited to, by the National Theatre to take it over to, uh, to the National Theatre, the company that, the, the theatre company that uh, Laurence Olivier started. So by the time it came around to go over there, it was right after 9-11. We went over, I think we left October something, and they were afraid we weren't coming because nobody was flying in those days. I mean, nobody was getting on a plane, especially going across the pond. And uh, we got on the plane, and we arrived, and they were just, they were just thrilled because, they, as I said, they didn't think we were coming. Mm -hmm. And um, the English, the play was very well received. We played the, are you familiar with the National Theater Complex? Yes, I am. Yes, yes. The Littleton, which is the 800 seat house. Uh, the Olivier is the larger one, mm -hmm. the Littleton, and then the, uh, what are the, the 300 seat house. Anyway, uh, we, we received standing ovations, which is really rare. People in America will stand up, uh, you know, for a sale. But we, they stood up for us, which wow. was so rare. The English people were all, and it won the Olivier for best new play of that year. So, and they presented it to us here in the Olivier. It was presented at the Seattle Rep here when we mm. came back. But it was a, quite an experience. I've also done Ma Rainey. Um, I did, I've done piano lessons a few times. And um, so August has been very important to Thank your career. Thank God for August, yeah. He's been really in there. I first met him in the 1984 
when he was before he had any real big success. He was just he was just uh, coming into the, the. I think Ma Rainey was on, on its way to Yale before it came to Broadway, and I met him at the New Dramatists in New York. I was introduced to him by one of his friends. What did you think of him when you first met him? He was very. He was very much a writer. <laughs> you know, um, what does I, that mean? Well, I find that playwrights are uh, the ones that I've met, like Edward Albee and and Tennessee Williams. They all they're strange people. They <laughs> they they're not you know they're not accessible in in the sense that you and I would sit and talk. They're they're not. They're, there's a, the res a reserve, and that he 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 fit that. Uh, that uh, that mode. Uh, Lanford Wilson is somebody I know for a long time, also, and um, he he's he's not he he, he wasn't accessible really. Uh, he was he was not unfriendly, but he wasn't accessible. You interviewed him, didn't you? I I, I wish I had. I really and I tried actually, but was not able to kind of land the interview. And then he got ill. And then, unfortunately, I was not able to to uh, get the interview with him. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm just curious, though. Do you figure that people like August and all of that, their way of being outgoing is what they write? Well, I mean, I think that I, that's you know it, it depends on on a lot of things. I don't know if I want to make that kind of a general. That uh, he he said that he had all of these people in his head. And that he was always dealing with that, and the man was very creative. You know, he wrote ten plays, one for each decade, and wow. then he died. When he finished the last play, he died. It was like almost as if it were preordained. He was sixty years old. He finished the last play, and he died. Um, so maybe that was had a lot to do with it. And who knows what was, what was uh, going on there. Let's talk about um, you becoming an actor as you talked in winning that Tony 46 year journey, but you grew up here in Seattle. Um, in Bellevue. Right. So how did you get into acting? It's a very interesting story. I was in the Navy. I played, um, I started playing, I started playing the oboe when I was in high school. And I was in the Seattle Youth Symphony here under Aranye, who the Seattle Youth Symphony, I don't know if it is in existence anymore, but it was very, um, it was very big here in the Northwest. And it was a big honor to be in it. And when I went in the Navy, I, um, they sent me to the Naval School of Music, which was at that time in Anacostia, next, really Washington, a suburb of Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. And they gave, I got a ticket through the USO. Now, this was in 1961. I'll never forget it, January um, of 1961. And I got a ticket through the USO to go see a play. And the play was at the National Theater. And I went to this play. And it was the first time I had seen black people on stage. You know, I came out of Seattle. And I was fascinated. And... I was uh, really intrigued by especially one actress in it. And I found my way, I went backstage. I went to the stage door because I wanted this uh, the actress's uh, autograph. And the stage doorman, which is really unusual because only later did I find this out. He said, oh, you want to meet her? I said, yes, I would like to. He said, okay, go there. And he opened the door and he, pointed me down the hallway and I walked down the hallway. And I went to the dr her door and she had a lot of people in the room and she saw me <coughs> standing in the door. Now I was in a Navy uniform. <coughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Have a sit. And she said, come on in, have a seat. And I went in and I sat down and she had all these people there. And she got, they got, people left the room and she turned to me and she said, you want to be an actor, don't you? True story. And she said, the man you have to study with is the man who directed this play, Lloyd Richards. Now, as fate would have it, I was going to be a musician. 
But from that moment, I knew she had pegged what I really wanted, my heart's desire. And as fate would have it, within nine months, I was in New York. And she had given me her telephone number. And I called her from the barracks in Brooklyn, where I was stationed. And she said, oh, you want to come and see this play? I'm doing this play. Come on down. We're doing previews now. I didn't know what that meant. So I found my went down. I was stationed in the Na Admiral Wells's band. I went, had, make a long story short, I had, they sent me to Brooklyn. I went down to see her that evening in this play. And she was in a play called Another Evening with Harry Stoons. And in the play, it only lasted six previews and one performance. It closed on opening night. In the, in the, uh, in the cast was Dom DeLuise, Barbara Streisand, Joan Copeland. These are people some of you may, the, you may <laughs> know. Some of them, of course. And afterwards, uh, Diana took me. We went to a, a club. Okay, who was she? Diana. Diana Sands. The play was A Raisin in the Sun. Oh, my God. And Diana Sands, 12 years later, I start opposite her in her last picture. She died at 39 of ovarian cancer. Mm. She was on the set. She was hired to do Claudine, that Diana Carroll was later nominated for Academy Award for with James Earl Jones. She was on the set. She had started the first day of filming, and she could not go on. They found her on her floor, and she said, I don't think I'm going to make it. Diana died in 1973. Um, but I did her last picture, Willie Dynamite, with her. We had filmed it in, earlier that year in 1973 at Universal Studios in Hollywood, and I starred opposite her. What a story. Yeah, it's all true. What a story. <laughs> it's all true. Did you want to do theater, or did it really matter to you? I wanted to be the best actor that I could be. I, never, I didn't want to be a star necessarily. I was under contract to Universal for four years and made a lot of money. Uh, when I did the Kojak series as a reoccurring role. I did the pilot for Kojak and they wanted me, they came to me and said, Telly does not want to have just another white guy. He wants, New York is mixed. He wants a black guy. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't, I thought I wanted to do movies at that point. And I said, oh, if I got tied down to a series. So um, this is one of the first times I've ever talked about this. They're writing a book about the Kojak experience as some English guy. Mm. And he tracked me down to find out these stories. but. Uh, so I said, well, I'll tell you what, um, at the same time, uh, Ed Sullivan was doing a show, producing a show called Next Stop 125th Street, and they approached me, they wanted me to star in this half-hour sitcom about a lawyer who worked on Wall Street and then goes home to Harlem, to his family in Harlem. And uh, I, they wanted me to, so Universal, who I was under contract to, said, look, you're going to take this show, and we all, when, when, when Kojak is available to you, tell me what we do. You do reoccurring. We'll give you eight Kojaks. All you have to do is eight a year. And we'll even pay you extra every time you appear on the show. And then you're free to do movies. And I said, fine, that's a deal. And what happened was that Ron Glass, who later went on to Barney Miller, replaced me in the Ed Sullivan Project. And... Uh, I vanished into obscurity. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> and then how long did it take you to get back from obscurity? Uh, been working my way back ever since. No, but it, it, I say that as a joke because every time I see Ron, we're always, we always talk about that. Right. But um, no, I, I had a, I've had a very good career. You know, the four years, I did all tons of television under Universal and movies. And uh, uh, really came back to the stage in, in 80, really 83. So I was really gone from the theater for about 11 years, from 72 to 83, when I came back to do the last thing that Jimmy Baldwin, a play of real Jimmy Baldwin was on Broadway, Amen Corner, the musical. The theater, is it your first love? Oh, uh, yeah. The theater is where, so for me, this is the actor's craft, the actor's medium. We were talking before we started the interview how technical it, I just did this thing in Canada, uh, and I sat around and sat around, and then you, they say, okay, television act. or movies, yeah, it's a whole different ballgame. Just coming out, okay, we got to set up the lights, we set up the sound, we set up the blah, the bleed, the blah, the blue, and then here, you know, you get two, and okay, now act. 
and uh oh we made a mistake we got to take that again and now now act and it's just it's it's long long hours whereas theater once you step out on that stage i'm talking about after the rehearsal period when you're performing before the live audience and the live audience is very important you know they're an integral part of that experience there's nothing like it there really is nothing like it because you're on your own gote said i wish the stage were like a type wrote, then only the most competent would dare to step upon it. Uh, it's, it's true. It really separates the men from the boys. So you have a home. You live in New York. You also uh, work out of uh, California in the business there. But is Seattle always home? Well, because my people are here. Your mother just celebrated her 99th birthday. Yesterday, yes. Yesterday. Uh, my family has been in the Northwest. My grandfather, my paternal grandfather, came here in 1887. So we've been in the Northwest since 1887. My mother's people, I'm not talking about the Indian side now, just the, the, the other side, uh, has been here for, since the 1890s you know, in Yakima. And you know, my great uncle was the chief of the Yakimas. Wow. Caillou de Tecumseh, he became the chief of the Yakimas. Your mother was born on the Yakima Reservation? Yes. I was so, born in Wapto, so I would know yeah. all of that area very, very well. Yeah, that's a whole part of American history that needs to be told. I know there was a book about black Indians that they, they estimate about 65% of African Americans have Indian blood, including Oprah Winfrey. She found that out when they did her. Yeah. Henry Louis Gates. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are a great many of us intermarried, and there were the, the whole history of, of the uh, interplay between Africans, the people of African descent, and Indians in this country is very interesting. Some tribes in the Southwest owned slaves, some acquired them, uh, and how they were differently, they were treated differently. The North Carolinas were the Cherokee or the Cherokee Nation. Uh, that's what our family was. Cherokee. So you've obviously spent a lot of time looking into this. Oh my, we, I, that, it's always been part of the heritage. And I used to go to the Yakima, that's how I learned to ride horses bareback you know, on the Yakima Indian Reservation. And in the role that you had in Joe Turner, you were a shaman, weren't you? Uh, that, similar, yeah. similar. They don't, the, the, it's a shaman, right? But the August uses something uh, in that play. Uh, the character that I played, Bynum, talks about a shiny man. And shiny man is not in African lore. Shiny man is only in American Indian lore. And uh, the brilliance of that, what August did by putting, is that he incorporated, just like the Africans did coming to this, these shores and to the, is he incorporated American Indian into this play, much as we did African-Americans did too. Do you know what I mean mm -hmm. when I say that? Right. All over the, the New World, from Brazil to the, uh, the Caribbean to Central and South America, I mean to Central uh, and uh, North America. So what else is ahead for you? What are the roles? What, uh, what do you want to do? I'm going to do um, a play... Um, that I did before, Alexander Dumas. I'm going to play Alexander Dumas. Um, this is a little known fact that he was, they came out of African heritage. Mm. Uh, he and his son. Uh, I'm going to play the Dumas pair. My mother saw this. We did the play in 1987 in Philadelphia at the Walnut Street. Uh, Alexander Dumas was supposed to come to this country on a speaking tour. And then his publishers found out, they said with his African appearance, he was a light-skinned man, but he had very kinky hair. It looked like an Afro, you see pictures of him, and there are pictures. So they were afraid America would not buy his works if they discovered that he had African blood. So he never came. And they would not send him here. That's a fact. So we, we're going to do this play uh, on Dumas, written by a very, very nice playwright, a white man uh, uh, out of North Carolina. 
uh, John McNicholas. We're going to do that. It's, it's very, it, it's, it, it's described as a comedy, but it, it's... Uh, is it Broadway or is it off-Broadway? We're going to see. We're going to see. At this point, we're, it's going to be done in the regional theaters, and then we'll go from there. Heck of a career. Yeah. And it's not over. <laughs> People say to me, oh, well, you, why you, you seem so young. I said, yeah, because I got a lot of things to do yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time to do this conversation with me, Roger Robinson. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. Local production and broadcast of Conversations at KCTS 9 is made possible in part by KCTS 9 members and by a major grant from the Floyd and Dolores Jones Foundation and by viewers like you. Thank you.